I'm about to do something I never thought I would do. For the last five days, I've been adopted into Devin Kiknosway's family to learn about Native American culture. Devin is a powwow champion and has taught me how to carve dance sticks, cook antelope stew, and scrape deer hides. Today, he is giving me a rare privilege to dance in the powwow in his outfit. I have no clue how people are going to react, especially since I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, uh, and I'm not native. Yeah, that part is pretty significant. All right, Plan. so it sounds like we could hang out and do whatever right now, but we can't. We got about two hours, 45 minutes till grand entry. I gotta teach you how to dance. It takes about an hour to get you ready. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be tough. <laughs> All right, I'm done for the adventure. If you don't know what a powwow is, it's a dance ceremony and competition in native culture that happens in many reserves around North America. <laughs> Right now, we are at the Shoshone Bannock powwow, and I've been in awe of the stunning outfits, music, and people. Now it's time to get to work. <laughs> so, you got tack your stick. You're just gonna put some decorations in, and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So what I normally do is I go like this, and I'll measure with my thumb, poke a hole. This is about, about a thumb. Make sure it's straight. There you go. We got 200 more to go. I'll see you when you're done. Yeah. I've been working on this dance stick from the day I arrived at Devin's house. This is one of Devin's many skills that serves his community, and it has definitely tested my crafting abilities. So I think I have completed my dance stick. It's not perfect, but that's gonna be part of my pitch because Devin challenged me to try and sell this. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Hopefully, you do my, sell uh, it. My, my business skills can come and play here. About an hour. All right, we gotta get ready. Time to get ready to put on yep. the outfit. Yep. Woo. Okay. He's gonna do. Most of it. I'll show him, but he's gotta do it. Shirts have that iconic Devin smoky smell. <laughs> yeah, they fit? Yeah. Yay! This feels so special. And I feel like I'm also like preparing for like a, a sports game, like a competition. I'm, it's the feeling pre-game. You're gonna need a breastplate, that pink thing in the corner. And then that black goes around. And then it, you just tie it down to here, but make sure you tie it so it's here. There's so many pieces to this. What would you do if uh, one of them falls off in a dance? If it's just a piece of your outfit, cloth, beadwork, just pick it up and keep going. But not feathers. Not feathers. Not feathers. Only certain people can pick up those feathers. Devin granting me permission to wear his feathers is a special honor that I don't take lightly, as non-natives are not allowed to possess or hold feathers. Eagles are a sacred symbol in native culture, and I've been trying to figure out why that is. So far so good, yep. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Still wet from last night. Yeah, that's do it. true, true powwow style <laughs> right there. So we still have a couple important pieces left to put on me, but the number one question in my mind is, uh, how is this? This is crazy. I'm looking myself in the in the screen here. The number one question that's running through my head is, how are people going to see me? Is this appropriation at its finest? But Devin's doing it for a reason, so I want to know why he's letting me do this. Look normal, straight. Yeah. Shake, try and get it to fall off. You're good. Wow. So this is the roach. This is, I'm wearing a $7,000 piece uh, hedgehog spikes. Hedgehog spikes. What are they called? Porcupine hair. Close enough. <laughs> Missed it by that much. So this is the final piece? That's it. Just the last two pieces. So it feels like if there's any part of this video where I'm going to get cancelled, it might be this. And this screams appropriation. Why are you letting me do this? There's gonna be people that are gonna do, wanna try and be native people when they're not. It's happening to us all the time. But here, I want you to experience what it feels like to be out there. And from hanging out with you, I know you have a good heart. I know you have a good mind towards what you're doing. And if you're watching this and, and you're native and you don't like it, that's okay. But I wanna try and show a positive side to it and let him experience a full aspect of what it's like to be a dancer. This is all my idea. I brought it up and I'm, I'm doing this on behalf of me and my family and for him. I feel the gravity of this opportunity to experience Devin's culture, but I feel scared and self-conscious. What will people think of me? Can I really live up to the moment? Can I do this moment justice? Can I ask you a question for the video? What, what are your first, what do you think of me wearing this? Uh, that's awesome, I'm surprised. I seen this story and I was like, 
No way he's dancing. Sure enough, you're dancing, man. <laughs> So what do you think? Heck yeah, that's what's up. How do you feel about him wearing this? Would you feel like this is uh, cultural appropriation? It's, it's on you, you know what I mean? <laughs> I have no thought on it, you know what I mean? As long as you wear it with pride, you know? But if you come in here and make a mockery of it, you know what I mean? Then we got two more things we can step outside, you know? I appreciate it, man. Hell yeah. This is him. Nice to see you. So what do you guys think? It looks awesome. Man. I'm very uh, self-conscious because I know this is a, it's a very serious and you know special ceremony. You'll be good. Can I can I bug you a second? So he's wearing my outfit. And he's from Spain. But what do you think about that? From Spain. He's from Spain. You can be yeah. honest. It's okay. He's good and bad, I guess. Okay. I mean, I don't know. As Native Americans, we should keep it in our own circle. But you know, we are the first people of of this country. We actually own this land that we stand on right here. And it's just like we gave our land away, so are we gonna give our culture away, I mean, yeah. our tradition? I appreciate you being oh, able to yeah. share some words with us. You look All right. nice. Anyway. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Hearing people's perspectives gave me context on the meaning of this moment. I don't want to let my fears stop me from honoring the culture and wearing this outfit with pride. But there's one thing missing. I still need Devin to teach me how to dance. I know the two steps, that's the foundation. I'll try and flow. You can, you can do a stomp step, you can do a bunch. You're not gonna teach me anything. Not gonna teach you anything. Okay, so this style of dance is called uh, chicken prairie? Yeah, the men's prairie chicken. Men's prairie chicken. Uh, I think a big question that a lot of people are gonna have is why do you dance like a chicken? What, why is there, what's the meaning behind that? Um, the story I was told was that a young man, he came across this, this prairie chicken so he took that prairie chicken's life but when he killed that prairie chicken that prairie chicken came back in the spirit world and he said why would you why would you kill me because I had to feed my family I had to provide for my family they're hungry and he says okay I understand I respect that but with you taking my life I want to give you something and what he gave us was that morning dance that stomp dance he said I want you to dance with me in spirit and keep my spirit alive and that's where that chicken dance was created so it's a good way of life it's a good teaching oh ways but enjoy it brother I appreciate it man of course yeah chicken dances come on up Good. Thank you. this is it everything I've learned in the last five days has led to this moment from cooking traditional foods to learning ancestral practices to respecting the Creator through family rituals I have experienced a glimpse of the heart that glues this community together. And I am not about to let them down. I was completely entranced in the moment. I let my body move to the rhythm of the drums and the power of the chants. I did not think anymore. Spring Creek, we're gonna come right back for protocol. I'm to sing for our oh, no, you're supposed to yell one more. To I all people, that. you have yeah. energy to do staff. one more. To sing for your people. Oh my God. <laughs> What's it feel like? I felt like it wasn't, this wasn't about me. This wasn't about, look at Mark Yan. Wow, Mark Yan got this awesome opportunity. Let's get all the photos to, you know, post about it. This was, this was just, this wasn't necessarily Mark Yan dancing. This was Devin dancing through me and him giving me that opportunity. So I feel, I feel very grateful. So he felt something different out there, for sure, and you can tell the difference. I didn't feel like any, people were looking at me. I didn't feel like the people behind me were looking at me, judging me. I felt like they accepted me. It was just you. It's you versus you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, man. Hi, he's all sweaty. I know. Super sweaty. That was a workout, too. Yuck. Hey, Georgette, what do you think? Hey, what do I think? What I think, think it's a great day. Oh, wow. I think he looks like you. Hey. Wow. Georgette Running Eagle, this is her powwow booth where she supplies 
pretty much all the different materials and items to build your stuff from spots to tacks to shells to furs. You no, know, she gave us a trailer to be able to stay in for the air conditioning and it was it was yeah, really really kind of her. All right, I'll let you get back to work. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hey, see you later. You, you look good. Thank you. Before I took the outfit off, I had one final task to complete. So now it's time to sell the dance sticks. Uh, it looks like Devin has a couple. He has to deliver them, maybe sell them. I still got to sell mine. This is it's going to be a big challenge. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sell it. Oh, learning quickly, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Do you make this? Yeah, we made that. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I'm buying this. You're going to buy this? Yeah, I'm oh, wow. buying this. This is a prank. No, no. The first place we stopped, it caught his eye. And he said, I'm going to buy this one. You sure you want to buy this? Yeah, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> I'm, I was just grabbing my money. <laughs> we talk about give and take. So now we're going to see it's his choice what he wants to do with the money. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, we sold it for 100, right? Is that, yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for, right for on, buying man. that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in the spirit of, of this whole video, I think there's only one r right answer to this. And I want to give all this money to Devin. So Jeez. This, is, this, is, this goes all back to you. Uh, I got something. I'll do something with this. Yeah. It only felt right to give the money back to the community and not profit myself from their practices. For that reason, I will be donating the ad money from this video back to Native Charities. Now, it was time to put the regalia away, which was a more complex process than I thought. When birds ruffle their feathers and they get things messed up, they're going to preen their feathers. They use their beak and they strip it along the feather. It's very soft with the, all the strands of the, the hair, or the feathers. And then you're going to put it away. Goes in the fan box, a small fan box. Watch your feathers, your feathers on your butt. Yeah, and you can put that one on top. And then nicely, while holding that, that fan, close it so it doesn't slide into the crack. Yep. Am I doing this right? Yeah. And then you lock up, and you're good. You go. keep that side down so the feathers don't slide and hit, and then you just put it back in. Watch your head. Remember, you got feathers on your head. These eagle feathers are treated with sacred respect. I can't wait for Devin to explain why that is. Wow. I can breathe a little. We didn't lose any feathers. Didn't yep. drop any feathers. That's a big part, big yep. thing. Oof. I am so relieved that I did not mess up any of Devin's outfit. After decompressing with some food and powwow lemonade. Oh my God, I needed that. I got a good night's rest with the cutest dog ever because tomorrow I have three big questions left to ask. What's Devin's native background? What is the thunderous drum circle music all about? And what's the significance of the eagle that nobody has explained to me? Yeah. Oh, morning, last and final day. My calves are extremely sore. My back's a little bit sore from this really thin, hard bed, but we're here, it's the final day. Let's get everything we need. Okay, time for the first big question. I don't know if we, if we got a clean shot of uh, what your background is. What native are you? What native are you? <laughs> what kind of native are you? He says. When you introduce yourself to people and people ask like, where are you from? I introduce myself and I'd say, my name is Devin Kiknaswe. I'm from, you know, I say Ontario, Canada. And then I tell them, so my mother is Mohawk from Gunawaga, Quebec, and my father is Ojibwe, Potawatomi, from Walpole Island, Ontario. It's a lot to Yeah, to it's a, like, that's what I mean. But we're so used to saying, like, you know, who are your parents, even though they didn't ask. And then did you say that you're 100% indigenous? This would be a subject that is going to be a touchy subject, because you're talking about blood quantum. How much of your blood in your, in your system is registered? Right? Are you a registered Indian? The blood quantum system was made strictly for dogs, horses, and natives. And that the goal is to, the more that natives keep breeding, having babies with non-natives, that blood quantum goes down. Soon their goal was to eradicate the native. And that's, that's the whole system when they came here, right? Yeah. We need to get rid of them because of what we did to them. And this is the way we're gonna do it. When Devin says they, he's referring to the US government who have oppressed Native Americans for the last 200 years. In the previous episode, our friend Robert hinted at the indoctrinating boarding schools the government created in the 19th century to strip kids of their native identity. The same goal was accomplished by the government's adoption project in the 20th century, where native kids were stolen from their families and adopted by white parents to assimilate into non-Indian civilization. You know, I have the white paper that has the stamps, tells what my mother is, tells what my father is, where they're from, what their blood quantum is, and then what my blood quantum is. Now, 
we were doing uh, this joke of kind of like uh, when <laughs> Devin tried to get me to say to people, oh, you know, I found out my great great grandmother was a Cherokee princess, which brings up a question of how do you, how do people f think about those things? But we don't have princesses. <laughs> We didn't have kings, we didn't have queens. There are, we call them pretendians. People that either are not native or they have a little bit. They found out they have a little bit. So now they're full blown. Then they get a question like say, hey, where are you from? What dialect are you? What reserve are you from? What land are you coming from? Who are your parents? What's your last name? And they can't answer these questions. So we call yeah. them out and we're yeah, like, hey, yeah. do it in a good way. That's not a good way. Yeah. If you know you do and you found that out, and you want to research more and learn more, by all means, I 100% say do it. Yeah, this is a, this is a, uh, a tough, touchy subject for sure. I got one question out of the way. Now time for my second question. What's the meaning of that booming powwow music? My first reaction when I heard this powwow music, I was like, what is this? The drum itself the, is the heartbeat of our people. At first I was a little scared to be honest with you. It, it, it sounds very intimidating. I don't know what they're saying. It says people are yelling, the drums are really aggressive. What can you tell me um, to understand the music a little bit better? And that expression is, uh, you know, you create your own style as a group. When we sit around that drum, it has a spirit. It's living and we treat it as such. We feed that drum, we feed that spirit. Even though it's a social event, it could bring healing and it can bring life to our people. The one remaining question that I still want to really learn about is the significance of the eagle in native culture. It's not something that I can just ask someone off the cuff. It needs to be one of those story times, sit down, eat some fry bread, and learn about something that's really significant. It's the last hours of the powwow. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but if it does, I'll share it. So I just had quite a, yeah. At this moment, Devin called me over to chat with me off camera. Can I tell him about the eagle conversation? Yeah. So Devin was just sitting right here and I was about to tell you guys, share the news that uh, I was not successful in learning about the significance of the eagles. And I told him I wanted to, you know, share that as a lesson with you all. He kind of just sat me down and told me about the eagle feathers and, and the significance of the eagle. And I'm not gonna share it. I'm not gonna share with, with you guys what it means. I learned here that some things uh, don't need to be shared. Some stories need to be told in person, one on one. If you're curious about the significance of the Eagles and you want to hear from someone who knows, find a time to ask that person and they'll tell you when the time is right. <sighs> wow, there's a lot to take in. And if you are like I was and don't know any natives, powwows are open for anyone to attend. Devin's app, Powwow Trail, will help you find all powwows in North America. I think the biggest thing for me is that everything has a meaning. Every clothes, every food, every story has a meaning, has a history behind it. Being immersed in native culture has been the biggest culture shock out of the 10 families I've lived with. As strongly as they protect their culture, they have so much love and generosity to share. Not to mention their lessons on life, which they've cultivated for like 10,000 years. The goal of making this video is to bring people together. By exposing people to the reality of native culture, we break down barriers and can better respect and appreciate this community. The one message that people at the Powwow had for the world was clear. Well, what do you want Americans to know about indigenous people? That we're still here, still here, proud, strong. We're still here. That we're still here. We're still here. We're gonna be here forever. That we're still here. We're not going nowhere. This video could not have happened without Devin's willingness to take us under his wing. So now, let's see if he can walk away from the powwow with a prize for himself. So Devin's about to do his final dance of the competition and then we're gonna get the results. I want, I know a second, but... Second place champion, coming to you from Ontario, Canada, Ontario, Chippewa, Mr. Devin Kickball, second place champion, coming up for 2022. There you go. Thank you very much. Over here, two of our Ontario Canada Chippewa Mr. Devin Kickball, and you got the second place champion, coming up for 2022. Thank you very much. 
That's it, a family of champions. And the trip is over. Ah! Wait, wait, wait. We can't end the video there. I still have to answer the main question of the series. What does it mean to be American? I've lived with the 10 families. I actually did it. That's crazy. I've been thinking about this question for the last couple months since I finished filming the last video. And truthfully, I struggle to come up with something. Each experience is so different. What being American is to a Texan is completely different what being American is to a Hawaiian. One thing that I have found in common amongst all of the cultures, despite having different traditions or habits or foods or music, they're all rooted in the same values of family, of love, generosity. It always surprises me how much people love to share their culture. And I think we, we currently live in this world of fear where it's, made, it's, it's the fear of the unknown and um, we don't know if we're going to offend someone, if we're gonna say the wrong thing. So that stops us from asking and it stops us from learning about different communities. And I think that's more harmful than if we do take a risk and do ask a question and learn about people who are not like us. I love this series, it's probably my favorite series I've ever done. And uh, I'm really thankful for you for watching and supporting the, the series as well. I wanted to give you guys also an update in my life. This year, I've stopped making videos, left my life in LA and went solo traveling around the world to discover myself. It's a really exciting time in my life. I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. And if this is the last video I make, thank you. <laughs>